Dan Larson here, and I'm at the photo booth with the first flea market finds of flea market season 2017. I'm pretty excited. Up first, uh, we've got... Uh, we're just going to start in the front row here. we got... Uh, let's go here. Uh, this is... Uh, G- for, uh, Generator Rex is a show that I have never seen. I think it was on Cartoon Network. Uh, this is Biowolf from Generator Rex. I don't know what he does. It looks like some kind of cybernetic werewolf. Uh, I picked him up out of a dollar bin of stuff uh, just because I thought he looked really cool. Um, yeah, he's not super articulated, but, uh, you know, for what he is, for a little figure like that, it's a pretty good amount of detail on his, you know, giant fingers here and his robot wolf face. Uh, I just dig him as a cool uh, toy design, and for some reason he's got uh, no knees, but he actually has uh, a little bit of an ab crunch here, so that's neat. Anyway, he's cool. I liked him, that's why I grabbed him. Uh, next to him, uh, we've got uh, vintage uh, Thundercats mini slide. He's missing his weapon, but uh, I have uh, quite a few of these at this point. Uh, I don't think I had slide, that's why I grabbed him. Um, it, same, he was basically out of a dollar bin as well. Most of these guys came out of a dollar bin. Um, that's where just, you know, a lot of the fun stuff is. Uh, next to him we've got, uh, Mask, Nash Gory, uh, the driver from the vehicle Outlaw. Um, I had him at one point, uh, and then I traded or sold. Uh, I, I had a complete Outlaw and liquidated it at some point, and so I was like, I need Nash Gory again, so I grabbed him. Uh, unfortunately he didn't have his mask, so I'll be on the hunt for that. Uh, next to him, we've got uh, a couple of DC Superheroes uh, Action League, DC Universe Action League uh, figures. We got Shazam or Captain Marvel, whatever you want to call him. And then we've got the uh, Jamie Reyes uh, Blue Beetle. They got some wear on them. You know what? They 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 all came out of the same dollar bin of uh, superhero figures. Um, I've got a couple of them. Uh, I don't. I, I can't. Wouldn't go so far as to say that I collect them, but you know, if I see them, if they're cheap, I'll grab them and uh, just put. But they'll show up in the shelves in the back of our videos every once in a while uh, just as a uh, filler. Next next to him, same line, the Superhero Squad was out at the same time as uh, the Action League stuff. Uh, got uh, Iron Fist there. They, they look like they've uh, had some play action. He's got some paint rub on his nose and a little bit of paint missing on his thumb there. But they're cool. They're fun little things. I mean, for a buck, what do you, what do you want? Uh, in the back row here, I'm going to slide these guys out of the way. I've got uh, Toy Biz uh, 90s Cable. Uh, you know, I used to, in the 90s, I had every single uh, figure that uh, Toy Biz put out, and at some point, either I got rid of them, or sold them off, or traded them, or whatever. They, I reduced that entire Toy Biz collection down to, like, two figures. I think I kept uh, probably Wolverine, uh, yeah, maybe three, Wolverine, Spider-Man, uh, and then uh, I think I kept Deadpool, actually. Um, and then, you know, from years of flea markets and stuff, I build it up, I sell them off, I trade them, whatever. Um, but uh, I, have, I didn't have cable. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have his giant gun with him, but uh, this is just a terrible figure. <laughs> um, I, it's, it's probably a, a special figure for a lot of people, one of their first, whatever. But just from an articulation standpoint, he's got, you know, he's got hips, he's got knees, uh, he's got a neck. And I mean, you know, as far as the sculpt is concerned, it's pretty, it's pretty cable accurate. Uh, this arm... Oops. This arm does this thing where it pivots this way, but not forward and backward, and then this arm only rotates and doesn't do anything else, so he always has this sort of open, uh, airing out his pits uh, kind of look. Uh, and, you know, there's no, like, there's no ridges on his cybernetic arm here, and I don't know, it's just, I, you know, I, 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 the more I sit here and the more I look at it, if you took his arms off, He's actually not that bad. <laughs> He's actually not that bad. It's just, it's too bad he didn't have regular arms with just like a regular old elbow joint. Uh, and that, that would have made a uh, pretty big difference. But I gotta say, it's not really... I don't even remember what this lever's supposed to do. Oh, there it is. So, hang on. There, oh. There it is. Hiya! I don't remember Cable having uh, karate chop action. But, uh... In the back, uh, next row here, we've got uh, Visionaries. That is, uh, I wrote his name down here because I, w- I wasn't going to remember it. I, I don't know anything about Visionaries. I don't read the comics. I didn't watch the cartoon if they had one. Um, I just know the line, the name of the line. But uh, that is Ektar. He came with the Lancer Cycle. He's supposed, I think this is supposed to be a fox uh, symbol on his chest here. But uh, as, as happens with these things a lot, it's uh, pretty scratched up. And it's really, I don't know if it's going to come off. Probably not, but it's it's good that it's there, but it is pretty scratched. He needs a new O-ring, too, but uh, at least his crotch isn't broken off. But, 
I've got a, I got a bag full of visionaries, guys. He's one I, I didn't have, uh, so now I have him. Uh, in the middle here, we've got uh, Starriers, which uh, kind of like Zoids. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know the full history of Starriers. I don't know if it's by Tomy uh, in the '80s. I don't know if they were part of Zoids. If Zoids came from them, if they came from Zoids, I don't, I don't really know what the story was there. Uh, but there's all, they've all got motorized sort of features and functions and whatnot. Um, this is sort of a robot dinosaur uh, that uh, he, he has a, I don't know if it's a battery operated function here. I couldn't find a spot where you would put a battery in him. Uh, but it also looks like he has a pull strip here, so you would change him. I think it goes like this. You would uh, change him into a motorcycle, I guess. I guess that's kind of like a motorcycle. And then he would have, he's got that big, heavy, heavy duty uh, rear wheel. You'd put in one of those pull strips and you'd pull it. And then this wheel would get going and it would, it would be better if I had the pull strip. But uh, one of those weird, quirky things. I had never seen it before. I knew about Star Ears. Oh, there we go. I knew about Star Ears. I did not know about Runabout here. Um, so I had to grab it. Uh, and uh, I looked it up when I got home and said, his name's Runabout. Good to know. Uh, neat little thing. I dig it. Uh, over here we've got uh, Street Sharks. I think it was like their last year they did Street Sharks. It was uh, Extreme Dinosaurs. This is Spike the Triceratops. Um, I don't... I, I, I dig the design. I, I dig the look of the figures. There's not really anything else out there that, that looks quite like the Street Shark stuff. And uh, who doesn't like a tough Street Shark with a giant head and teeth and stuff and whatever. And it's even better if it's got dinosaurs. I have Slobster uh, on the shelves uh, in the, behind the videos. The shelves behind me in the videos. Um, he's supposed to have some armor here on his arms, which he does not. A little bit of paint wear, but uh, I dig him. Uh, dinosaurs, tough guys, mutants, it's all good stuff. In the back, over here on the left, uh, friend of the show, Eric Kennedy, and friend of mine, Eric Kennedy, uh, he, uh, you make sure you check out uh, his uh, Twitch stream uh, at Eric Kennedy uh, is the uh, name of his stream over there. Um, he uh, broadcasts every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sun uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and uh, it is a fascinating look into uh, a conceptual artist. He works. Uh, he's a conceptual art artist for Riot Games. Uh, does a lot of work on the League of Legends, obviously. Um, and uh, it's a incredibly intimate uh, look into his process, how he works, how he thinks, uh, and just how he makes amazing artwork. Uh, and he's uh, uh, been a fan of the show for a while. He actually hooked me up. Uh, with a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive uh, Jin Erso figure. Um, fantastic presentation here. Uh, as you know, uh, if you've followed the show at all, you know I'm not really a big package guy. Uh, but I also never get the opportunity to get my hands on some you know, nice pieces like this uh, where they do really put, uh, put some thought into the presentation. So this is one I'll probably keep in the box like this, uh, especially since it was a, a gift from Eric. Uh, and then over here, Eric uh, also <laughs> hooked me up uh, with a Mafex... Mafex Kylo Ren, uh, which is a ridiculously amazing figure, and uh, we will absolutely be doing a, a video here at some point in the near future, uh, matching him up with the Black Series Kylo Ren uh, and seeing how those two things uh, fare against one another. Uh, obviously, this is a, a, a more expensive figure than uh, the Black Series, so you would expect it to be better uh, in several ways, but uh, it, uh, it's just a, a really incredible piece, and I, I, I really appreciate Eric. Uh, going out of his way to get me that uh, so that we can do a video. Um, go check out his stream. He's uh, Follow him on Instagram, uh, at Eric Kennedy. He's all over social media. Follow him on Twitter. And uh, tell him Dan from Toy Galaxy sent you. Uh, in the back over here, we've got... Uh, I actually just this morning was at a flea market. Didn't really want to go. Mrs. Toy Galaxy insisted we go. Not in like a bad way, in a nice way. And I was like, you know what, let's go. It's it's flea market season. It's I just, I'm grumpy because it's early in the morning. I don't really want to get up. Uh, so we went, and the very first box uh, was a bunch of uh, vintage antique camera equipment. And uh, one of my holy grail pieces was sitting in that box. Uh, this is, if you're not familiar with it, this is a Graflex, Graflex 3-cell flash handle. Uh, when you see in movies and on TV and stuff, uh, the old news reporters, uh, they have the big the camera with the giant flash bulb. It has uh, this uh, on the top of it here. Uh, and then there's a light bulb that sits here, uh, and there's a button. This piece attaches to the side of the camera, 
uh, and then there's a button up here and, and you can either trigger it manually or you can trigger it when uh, you actually hit the shutter button on the camera itself to, to make the flash go off. Uh, when they made Star Wars, uh, these things were pretty abundant, pretty common. Uh, this is the base for a uh, Luke Skywalker lightsaber. Uh, the only changes they made to it were they literally added uh, cut up strips of windshield wipers to the base here, put a D-ring on it so that it could attach to his belt. Uh, there's like a couple of little weird like gem things, like a, a lever here to activate the lightsaber. Uh, and mine is missing the button here, and I was looking these up uh, online to see if I could get a replacement button. Uh, but obviously people have been uh, buying these things uh, over the years, selling them on eBay, uh, and modifying them to make quote-unquote real lightsabers uh, that are, you know, prop accurate, movie accurate. Uh, and so these things have become very rare uh, and very expensive. And just to get this button, it's like $125. So I think I'm going to see if there's a, uh, uh, a third party, somebody out there who's just uh, making them for, you know, repro style. Uh, maybe I can pay like $20 uh, and just get a button put on there. I'm not really trying to make this into, I'm not going to put, you know, strips on here. I'm not going to drill holes and put a D-ring on it. I just like having it. I've always wanted a real one. Uh, this is Anakin, Luke Skywalker, Rey. You know, this is that lightsaber, and I'm, I'm really excited to have found it. It has long been a piece that I really wanted to find in the wild because I wanted to own one, but I did not. There's no way I could have possibly justified logging on and paying the prices of these things actually go for. So it was incredible to find it, you know, this early in uh, flea market season. It's the, I, I don't see me topping this, uh, you know, unless somebody's got a bin full of like 300 more Boba Fett's, uh, I don't see topping this for a very, very long time. It's a, like I said, it's a piece I've been looking for for quite some time, as long as I've been going to flea markets. As, as, ever since I learned that this is what they used for lightsabers, I, I thought for sure it was the kind of thing I could find uh, at a flea market in the wild from somebody who was dealing in photography equipment but may not know of its you know specific connection to uh, Star Wars and the props of Star Wars. So anyway, I'm pretty excited to have that. Uh, thanks for watching. Please give this video a like. Hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos we produce uh, here at Toy Galaxy. Let me know in the comments below if you're as excited as I am for another season of digging through boxes of broken toys and photography equipment just for the potential there might be something cool at the bottom, like a lightsaber.